preschool like the preschool warm-ups did y'all ever did you ever do that like we do jumping jacks and then we what do the like fuck? yeah preschool like yeah. military camp. yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah we, i was on a playground back in preschool i think yeah, yeah what, what the, the fuck, fuck? I, was, <laughs> I had a teacher in preschool that like she didn't teach us how to count but she was trying to see like who already knew how to count and so we had to count to 30 or 20 if we wanted to go outside and so like I didn't know how to count to 20, so I'm watching all these motherfuckers count to 20, and I'm just like, damn, like, I'm not gonna be able to go outside. And so, like, <laughs> so, what I, so I just listened to the you people. You couldn't count to 20, that's funny. Yeah, so I was, like, listening to the people who were doing it right, and then finally I got the pattern right, and I counted to 20, and as soon as I got outside, she's like, all right, yeah, it's time to come in. I was like, what the fuck is this, bro? <laughs> and ever since then, I just had to just stand for teachers. I remember yeah. those memes of the pizza party, you know, like, the half a slice, you know what I'm saying, about the pizza parties. And yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The two the slices, slices that are, like, actually half a slice of a pizza. Literally. Like, I hit, like, three times. Uh, we yeah. had yeah. Pizza, we had pizza parties at school where like they didn't even order pizza. It was just cafeteria pizza. Oh, that's why. When I went to the, I'm not even gonna name that school. But when I was like really young, because it was a really poor school, so it's just like, it's just like, it wasn't a really poor school, but the people who went there were poor. I guess. Yeah. I don't know, but anyways, yeah, that's the time of time. But I did have regular pizza parties. I will say that in school, like where they bought pizza hut or some shit. Speaking of, why does everyone hate on little, on Pizza Hut, bro? Why does everyone hate on Pizza Hut? Pizza Hut is smell, bro. It's the smell for me. Okay. Pizza Hut, I'm not a fan of the sauce. It's the smell for me, bro. bro cookout smell. smells like fucking shit. Cookout, you know, that, I'm not gonna lie, I might say I some controversial shit. I think cookout's kind of overrated. I know I agree with you wholeheartedly, but it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a Carolina it's a Carolina thing though. It's hundred percent just like cheer wine. Yeah. So like when it comes to like I I kind of rep that shit. Like I'll I'll post cookout on my story because I know y'all motherfuckers don't have this, bro. So I do. You don't. The same thing with cheer wine. Same thing with Waffle House. I love flexing Waffle House on my story because I know that most of the people who follow me are like not from the south, so they've never been to a Waffle House. I don't know if I want to eat at Waffle House. You don't eat Waffle House. Nah, I heard those things are dirty as fuck. Hold up. Oh, wait, you're I mean, from. You're not from the I'm South. Not from what the, the south. fuck? <laughs> I forgot, bro. Oh, they got pancakes up in North Virginia. Bro, yeah, they, they don't have waffles up North. Never. No, <laughs> no we, don't, we don't eat waffles yeah, at all. No, that's no. not. We don't even, they don't even sell waffle makers in the no, store. That's not a thing, bro. No. But, no, Waffle House is garbage, but it's like, it's like, it's a sudden thing, you yeah. know? Yeah. All right, cool. We're good. I don't, know. I don't know, bro. Waffle House, I just heard that shit's mad dirty. I don't like soda like that, so cheer wine, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Waffle House is my first and job, and I can Yo, it my, my beef, beef with cookout, the milkshakes are delicious. But, right, I went to order a burger at fucking cookout and asked for onions in my burger. I bit into this shit, and like, it's like an onion the size of a fucking burger they do, pad. They do the rings, yeah, the like, big ass rings. What? That is so fine to me, bro. That's how I want my what? onions. If I want onions on a burger. Thick ass onions. Yes. A thick onion. Yep. G H I C C. Thick onion. <laughs> <laughs> it's still in a ring though. It's still in a ring. It's just it's not it's not like they cut it's the onion. It's crunchy. Out, but that it makes onion. me cry. What? I love it. That's why I need my onions. If I want onions, I want the whole goddamn onion. I just thing. chop it up, grill it a little bit, give me that's good. Sauteed caramelized onions. Caramelized onions go hard, bro. Yeah. Like, they do, baby. but then it's like it's not an onion anymore. It's just that's yeah. an onion. It's, it's an cool. onion. It's a caramelized. Like but you don't get that nasty ass onion bread. Why do you want? Why do you want? Na- that's that. Because you get nasty ass onion, onion, bread. onion bread from nasty it's ass. Like a steak <laughs> Yo, no cap, bro. I actually was. I, I okay. Actually, it would be cap if I said I was in it. But I almost. My dad, when I was a kid, he was working in Vidalia, Georgia, and they have like. And Vidalia is an onion, like a Vidalia onion. They're like sweet onions. Yeah. And they have a Vidalia onion festival. And they had an onion eating contest, just like a hot dog eating contest, except it was for eating onions. 
and like low key, I was like, yeah, I can do that. But they like, like, like apples or something. Yes, bro. Like, like they be eating them bitches like apples. Whoever eats mm-hmm. the most Vidalia onions wins. I'm like, bro, I'd puke my fucking guts up doing that. I mean, nasty. Like motherfuckers biting into a potato. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, I can never fucking do that. Mm-hmm. Hell no. But shit. This is called classic interview number 53. Wow. We it's been for 53? Damn, yeah. God damn. Damn near one year since me and uh, Deep October here did the last one. Yes, sir. Yeah, I so think. Wait, where did you find that? Why did you text me? Did you my just Snapchat, think about it my Snapchat memories came up. And uh, I'm pretty sure the video that I saw from my Snapchat, because I was wearing the same shirt. I was wearing that Ghost Adidas shirt. And I remember being because I, I was because me and my girl had just broken up so I stayed at my mom's for a little bit and I remember taking that video before the interview in that same shirt and uh I was like I'm so like that's why I hit you up last night I was like I'm pretty sure it was a year ago today that we did that that's so wild because I knew we were doing this today so I was like yo like that's actually weird oh so, but yeah it, that's it's, no, it's, it's funny, funny as fuck mm-hmm. like it's, it's so we were just talking about so we were like oh let's do next Wednesday it's like, all right, didn't even think about it. It's been one year since we did that first interview. So what the fuck's happened to you in one year? Like, how was your life to from a year ago? Man, so much, bro. So fucking much. Um, so hit my first million in that time period. Mm-hmm. I don't think God in the Room was at one million at that time. Mm-hmm. Definitely not. If I hit my second million in that time period. Um, Amazon, Amazon, M's. Yep. Yeah, and it's two songs that I like. I like the song, but it's not even close to my best music. So I'm, you know, looking. I'm looking forward to those other M's. Um, what's happened since then? I've been in and out of a toxic ass relationship. Uh, that I, I made a whole album about. Strange drop, strange death, and me and Sunny worked on, you know, Pleasure Dome. That was our joint Absolutely. EP. Absolutely. Uh, we moved in. Oh, d- yeah, we weren't even living together at the time. Yeah, me and Sonny live together now. Mm-hmm. Um, working all the time. Uh, I quit my job about, it's probably been like six months now. I've been, I haven't worked in six months. Not like that type of work, like clocking in and out. And that was something that was a big goal of mine was to not, was to just live strictly off of music money. How, do you, how, does, that, how does that feel now? Uh, it feels great, but it's also scary because you don't, you don't have that um you're taking a risk at that point like you're he actually inspired me on it just watching Sonny grind and like him not like since I've met Sonny I've never seen this man work a job so like you see, seeing seeing <laughs> seeing my boy my job, see, <laughs> seeing my boy Full grind time. like that, that really inspired me but that was a goal I had for a long time but you don't have that security you don't have the security of like knowing what your paycheck is gonna be at the end of every every talk, week talk, and talk, shit. Talk what you do. Right, right. You have to hey, literally put in the work. And with me right now, like I'm making money off of streaming is my main income, main source of income. We'll run repo sales time to time, but I'm not big on doing those. And then feature sales. Him and I we literally made like two K in a day. It was like, like too easy. Yeah, it was super easy. It was just sound like we, we did a joint, we did a like on his beat, uh on it was on his beat and then a verse for me and we sold them like four or five hundred a piece and uh yeah we sold a few of those and we made like two can a day it was, it was cool as shit so we actually had to cut it off you know we, um, we yeah selling, like, three, four, so. yeah because bro i yeah. hate i hate doing i don't hate doing features but even people that i really fuck with like it's hard for me to like <clears throat> when it comes to sending opens like if we're in the studio together it's different it's way easier that way yeah. but like doing shit via the internet like i just i procrastinate i'm a big procrastinator so that I'm glad we cut it off when we did because even after we sold the ones that we sold, like people were still hitting us up, like, yo, is the sale sale still going on? And whenever you have four hundred and fifty dollars in front of your face that you could use, it's hard to be like, nah, bro, yeah. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that anymore. But at the same time, like him and I have talked about it, it's like we don't wanna do that shit way too much because it's like we make good ass music. Like I, I, I believe in what we do. We really put a lot of effort into each song. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's actually show. it's exactly. actual effort that we put into this shit. So like I don't want to oversaturate myself with being one of those artists that's just like because I have the ability to sell a bunch of features, like doing that all the time. It's just not I don't know, it really takes away from like my personal feeling of artistic value. I feel like I'm just when I do that, I feel like I'm objectifying myself or my art, so whatever, but yeah, so that, that's like that's where my main source of income. I've been broke as fuck. I've had a solid amount of money at one time. It all just depends, bro, because I, it changes. It changes how much I get paid at the end of every month and shit. And so, 
Yeah, but it's, it's been cool, but like, I, that's what I've been wanting. It feels so good to wake up in the morning and not have to be like, damn, I gotta go to work right now. Yo, like, it feels so I'm good. To not have that feeling, feeling at all, bro. No. Fuck that. I get bored easier. Uh-huh. Don't get me wrong, I get bored, but I'm not the one. You do have more free time. That's dangerous yeah. at the same time. Yeah, and you, you can get impressed <laughs> that way, but um, yeah, you gotta fill that time with something, you know, productive. Yeah. Yeah, you have to, or you're gonna get, you're just gonna fucking end up hating yourself. Get cabin fever and shit, you know? Literally, <laughs> yeah. No, no cabin. Yeah. As much time as we spend in the apartment just doing shit, whatever it is we do, like, I feel that way a lot. Like, I'll be like, damn, like, I, I need to just go outside. I need to just be in nature or some bullshit. There was a time where I realized how antisocial I was actually getting. Yeah, because, yeah. like, you don't have a job. You kind of, like, lose that scheduling and that social aspect of your life. Because you think about a high school, when you were in school, that was, like, your, that was, like, a social thing for you. You went and you saw people every day. Mm-hmm. You met, you hung out with them after school. Work is kind of like the adult version of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, literally. Yeah. So when you're self-employed, especially off like something creative, it's kind of like you wake up every day and just like, all right, um, let's make something. And it, also, it, also, <laughs> it makes you value your money more. It, for Definitely. Me, especially personally. if you're starting out. For me, yeah, for me personally, because like when I had a job and like I was I was making that paycheck every week, and I had I had a, sorry I keep kicking this. I have a I have a solid I had a solid job, um, so like. You guys spent so much money on clothes. Bro, yeah, because I, I, I didn't give a fuck about that. That shit, like, I made that money working for someone else. So I was just like, "Fuck it, let me just." I just spent the shit. I've never saved up. Barely, like, didn't have a lot of money to myself because of how much money I would spend. But like now that I'm making more money direct, I'm living directly off of what I created. Like, the money means more to me, so I'm more reluctant to just go out and just spend it on bullshit. So I, that, that's been a big thing for me too. Even though I have less money than I did, I already know that that's gonna change. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it though. Yeah, no, definitely. It's like it's a, it's a big leap, but that's a that's a lot to say that you're actually you can't support yourself to stop you know streaming, especially because when I met you, what was it? Eighteen. Was, no, it was, it was 2019. For the show? Yep. Was it? No, was no, no, it was 2018 because I just dropped If I Miss You. I'm telling you, bro, it's 2018. That was a, that was a, November 2018 is whenever we did that show. I'm going to go on Instagram. Do it right now. I'm telling I'm you, bro. Instagram. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm telling you. I know for a fact it was 2018. November. It's the very. We're about to see. We're going to see. I can pull up my memories. I'm telling you because it was a month before the 420 show that we uh, that we booked NASCAR. Wrong. Wrong, bro. <laughs> Are you about to see, boy? Here it is, use the flyer. March 22nd, 2019. <laughs> no, that wasn't, oh, we didn't meet that. We met at the, we met at the, the Dumpster Squad show. That was October 2018. I'm talking about, I was talking about the show that we did where you opened for. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. That's the show I was talking about. Oh, okay, okay. My fault. My bad. We were just talking about, so nobody was really wrong. We were just talking about two different shows. Right, right. That's really it, honestly. Yeah. But you know, you've come fucking a long way since then. Um, so Pleasure Dome, you did what, four out of five beats on Pleasure Dome? Four out of five beats and all five tracks picked by me. That's fire, bro. It would have been five, there was a reason we didn't make it a, a fifth one. Oh yeah, because I had already- That is a beat, was fucking crazy. Yeah, that I, 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 I had already dropped Mitsubishi on SoundCloud. And yeah. like, I wanted to get it on Spotify, but I didn't like it enough to just do it as a single. So I wanted to put it on something. Mm-hmm. So, not that, okay, that's not, that's not, that's not that I didn't like it enough to be a single, it's that I didn't feel like that song itself was a single material, it was like, a material. I definitely think it was. I just, dis- well, personally, this at the time, that's why I decided to put it on yeah. Pleasure Dome, so. Mm-hmm. That, no, that's a really good fucking song. Yeah, that's by far. That's uh, honestly one of my favorite songs. Like, really? Yeah. Mitsubishi? Yeah. That's hard. That's hard. It's a good one, it's definitely a good one. But yeah. Pleasure Dome is absolutely... To this day, the, thus far, my favorite project I uh, have worked on. And also just because, like, like me and Sonny have such a good chemistry in the studio. Mm-hmm. It, he's actually the first person that I've ever gotten into a studio with. He made a beat from scratch, and I made the lyrics from scratch. Every other, any, any time in the past, I've always had to be in my room alone, um, not with anybody. I couldn't, but, like, but like, like, I feel like bro really brought that out of me with Pleasure Dome. We made all those songs within a four month period. And they were the easiest songs that I've probably yeah. ever recorded, mixed, anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Same for me. It was effortless, bro. It was. Yeah, it just all came natural, if that makes sense. Yeah. Whatever, 
that's the best music. Whenever we made Strung Out, I had just like gotten my heart broken for like the 15th time by the same person. We and need to continue to your heart broken. Yeah, I swear. <laughs> Every other week, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was, um, I was, uh, I was sitting in my room actually, and at the time we had the studio in the in the dining area of our apartment, and um, I was just I was just sitting there, and like I heard this melody coming through my door, and I like so I knew like Sonny was making a beat, and I was like, I feel like shit right now, but I'm finna go out there and see what this man is doing, and so I went out there, and like I heard it, and I was like, okay, bro, like. Let's do something. He had, you hadn't even made the drums yet. I hadn't even put. I had yeah. no, no drums. No. Yeah, it was just, just the melody. melody, just the melody. And I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, okay, bro, do whatever you gotta do. Like, finish that shit, and we'll come back to it. And so we finished it, and like, he looked, he put me on the spot for that too. I was yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, got, I gotta go hard now. Yeah, no, because yeah, yeah, right right you, right you were just, you were just fucking. You weren't even like really making a beat seriously. You were just. It was just an experiment. Yeah. 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 So I so we did that and like I remember when we made Strung Out like we were both like what bro because that was to me that song was like revolutionary for me personally like making that song was uh because I did it all from I didn't use a lot of times I use old lyrics I've already written for it for a mm -hmm. song and put it in just to fill shit in with that song I didn't I didn't do that at all I just went in there just was saying what the fuck I needed to say. And then when the hook came around and we and I did the strong hour, she was drug addicted. I just like, bro, I just instantly fell in love with that song. And then like, after, that was the, that was the first song we made on Pleasure Dome? Uh, actually, I think it was the second. I think that was the second. I'm not sure if Drugs You Should Try was the first, but. No, 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 it was I, it was the I Tried, I Tried Oh, too. yo, you're right, yeah. actually, yeah, it was that. It was, it was same that. thing with that, same thing with that, he was a, I, I don't I don't think you're making the beat. You just had the beat on him. I listened to it and from start to finish just wrote it and then. But yeah, that whole album was made the same way. We just we we were just he was. I heard him making a beat or we. I went to his room. He showed me some beats, spit some shit on it. Boom, made the song. So, yeah. yeah, no, that's that's fire. And that's, that's the, the best, best music that was together like that too. The best music was effortless. Like the best songs were like effortless. You yeah, know what I mean, literally. Like you know what was also was funny. You said you were not gonna rock your chair in the same year. I've been watching it. I've been like, I've been watching it. It's not gonna stop, bro. Someone's gonna notice it too, bro. They're it's because he can't vape right now. He can't vape, you know. Oh, I've been hitting it on the low, bro. Me too, Loki. I just been kind of. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, <laughs> the explanation is needed. Uh, I mean, so that's, that's the first, first thing time. I thought when I heard it. <laughs> I'm guarantee you're probably not gonna you're probably not gonna guess the, uh, the name. From no, the probably not because I thought it was better. That's fucking was dude. Good I, why did that never click to me, bro? Like some good head pleasure dome. What? What? I never. I thought thought that's that's what I thought at first. This yeah. album. Like, oh, wow, this right. album sounds like some good head. That's why I named it. No, because people just use head, 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 head too much. much. Like, <laughs> why don't we start? Like, don't why don't we start using pleasure dome? Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure head. Voluptuous sounds neck. Pleasure like head that. sounds cool. Though. I got some voluptuous <laughs> neck. Like, I like that. There you go. Voluptuous neck. I got that. I got that stupendous neck. Stupendous. My boy pulling out the whole vocab. Damn. <laughs> no, 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 but, um, so the idea of Pleasure Dome, like, where that name comes from, and as well as the cover art, so the cover art of Pleasure Dome is, um, Marjorie Cameron, and it's her, in the movie, inauguration of the Pleasure Dome, which was, it's a movie, it's an experimental film shot by a filmmaker that goes by the name of Kenneth Anger, and he's an occultist, mm -hmm. and, um, like, follows, like, Aleister Crowley's, uh, um, Theology and shit like that. He was the first openly homosexual. Not that that's a. Not that that's like. It's. But like. So, he was the first openly homosexual filmmaker in Hollywood. He mm -hmm. he was born somewhere outside of Hollywood in California. Um. But he, but he's been making films since like, like like the forties. Like he he's been around for a long time. He's the last person that's alive that I think was like actually acquainted with Aleister Crowley. And, um, which is in a cult as you can read all about him. But anyways, long story short, um, so when I watched that film, cause I was, I, I got into a phase where I was like really obsessed with reading about occultism, uh, like Thelema, uh, like Satanism and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, 
so I, I, I found his films and I was I watched the inauguration of the Pleasure Dome and when I watched it given I was very hot and so it kind of I did, I did, yeah, it, no it, it didn't just, yeah it really spoke to me when I watched it despite the fact that the movie is really just a whole lot of nothing it's just it's like early visual effects it was shot in the 50s but um but just from that album I mean from that that movie it's based off of like he shot it based off of a costume party that he went to where people were dressed up as their their vices and so it's that movie just brings in the theology of different gods like ancient gods that are like in Thelema but also in like ancient like ancient Egyptian gods and um so that's where the whole idea of Pleasure Dome came from and the cover and all that um and we kind of I just I was inspired by that movie the songs themselves don't necessarily relate to the movie as much but like that's where the that's where the idea came from ultimately so and honestly, yeah, there's actually more to it because I've actually thought about this a lot about like the whole player game idea, and there's more to it. But like for some reason, my mind's kind of going blank. There's something I'm forgetting. So that like kind of inspire like the sound and the direction you took for your sound. We don't, you know, like five minutes left on this part too. Oh, uh, this is part two right now. No, on this part, on this oh, part. T -O -O. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, actually, yes, because so um, one of the producers I work with, Edith, he um, he also he was kind of the same boat as me, he, he got, got obsessed with like reading about occultism and um, esotericism and shit like that. And whenever I dropped Qualia, whenever he basically went over how he felt about Qualia, he described it as being esoteric and like, like he described it as like the definition of esoteric, just by what I was talking about and all of that shit. And so like that's kind of what inspired me to make an album based off of that same shit, or EP based off of that same idea, just trying to, trying to the vibe of that that dark feeling, that dark melancholy, somber type shit is just like whenever I that's how I feel whenever I learn about those forbidden knowledge type of religions and shit. So that's ultimately it. It was it was big aesthetic. It was just big, it was big on aesthetic for me. Really? Really. It was like the way it made me feel, the way that that type of art makes me feel. And I'm really big. I'm really big into like old films like strange death the whole concept was based off of um vampires lesbos which is a whole nother old old film mm -hmm. and um yeah so that's I, I just i get a lot of inspiration from old films like that for sure it's just, interesting yeah that's very interesting i would never thought that i thought it was just you know you got your heart broken again it in my head, bro. <laughs> yeah <laughs> no nah, no nah, in my head bro just crying over me in my when i picture myself talking like i picture myself as like like one of those like, like old proper dudes who wears who wears like from the fifties that wears a suit and like <laughs> and talks, <laughs> and talks yeah and talks with like like that that transatlantic oh, no. yeah I can see yeah, yeah that transatlantic <laughs> shit. that's how I picture myself in my head so like I tend to take yeah, a lot of inspiration from that time period. Got a pipe. Yeah, yeah I would bro I would smoke, smoke a pipe in a heartbeat, bro. I would, if I you know if, if I if I could walk around hitting one of them shits all day. Like a pipe, all sophisticated. Yeah. Shit. I just don't like tobacco. Out. So literally, <laughs> you smoke weed out of it. I mean, I, not dude, I don't. I don't smoke weed like that. Like, I smoke out. weed, but not like I don't like being that high. I'd be hitting yeah. that shit all day. I'd be. I, I got. I got anxiety, bro. Weed would just be. I don't like being that high all the time. So. Yeah. No, I feel you. It's definitely good to be grounded. Yeah. Some people are just high all day every day. Well, I, I, was, definitely I, I didn't say I was grounded. I'm not saying it wrong. Don't get. I didn't say I was grounded. I just said <laughs> now when I'm sober, don't mean I'm grounded, bro. I gotta do that myself. I can be I can be grounded on weed too. It just depends. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. But we'll fucking wrap up part one right yeah, here. For and, sure. Uh, part two's going home right now. Peace. Like he was like, bro. He's like, it was some dumb. It was some shit. Like, bro. Like by the top, bro. Just wait till episode one hundred and twenty, bro. One hundred and twenty. That shit's gonna be fine. But that's what like, people tell me about One Piece too. Dude, literally, yeah. yeah. like, bro. I do not have time to wait a hundred episodes. Like, I'm, I'm, I need some, I need some entertainment now. Like, some of my favorite animes are like twelve episodes long, bro. Or like twenty four episodes. Yeah, long. swear, dude. Swear. Yeah, like I love animes that like Samurai Shampoo is my favorite anime. That's just like twenty four. Shampoo is so. legendary, bro. bro. I love that. Fuck. I can't have this, bro. Bro, like, I don't even be watching anime that much. Honestly, like, he put me on more anime than anything. But, like, it's funny because a lot of people think that, like, because I came, I really, like, started blowing up, so to speak, when, after Trash was posting me and all this shit. So, like, a lot of people are, like, think I get inspired by anime. I get that question all the time. Like, what's your favorite anime and shit? 
Like, I really just don't be watching it like that. I When I'm high, dude, it's the best. I love the game. I, not 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 sound head ass, but like I really enjoy anime when I'm just really fucking high. But like when yeah. I can't watch it sober, for some really? reason, yeah, I really just I can't. It's too much going on. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like Waffle House, you know. You gotta <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta be drunk or high to go to Waffle House. Same idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyways. So damn, I hope you guys aren't getting too tired. I know your sleep's got. Fuck no, bro. I woke up at like I'm five o'clock, bro. Like I'm, I'm up. You said you guys went to bed at eight, bro. I woke up at like seven thirty. That's probably funny. went to bed around like eleven. Dude, Dude, bro, like, I like, I like, I told this man, I told this man I was going to bed at like four a.m. and I did, I actually did, and I just went into my room and played on my phone for like four hours, and on my computer and shit, and um, I like came out my room at like eight o'clock in the morning to go get some breakfast, and this man is still on the couch playing fucking Dead by Daylight. I'm bro, like, that game is addicting. Dude, it bro. is, it bro. Is. It's so addicting. Yeah, sleep schedule was all fucked up, but it's okay. Bro, bro. I just know when I did acid one time, I was up for like almost forty hours straight. Oh my god. Worst. Like, I hate that, bro. Like, I was making beats, and my boy was here, he was staying here, and we were working on music, and he's like, alright, I'm going to bed, he's sleeping out here on the couch, and the studio's in that room. And he woke up, made breakfast, came back from the studio, he's like, you're still making beats? I'm like, yeah. He's like, bro, it's literally been like 12 hours. I mean, I mean, <laughs> like, did it feel like having 12 hours? No. I made like 10 beats. <laughs> like, <laughs> damn. And I was just like... I don't know. I was so in the zone. Like, I heard every sound specifically before I laid it down. <laughs> like, it was yeah. so You got tunnel vision wild. right at that point. You yeah. Know, like, hyper-focused. I don't know. I don't even know where the fuck those beats are. Nothing came from them. But, um, I don't know. There's a zone from there. Like, oh, this is pretty cool, but it's weird. Who the fuck is going to hit this? I don't know. I mean, a lot of my best beats seem to come at nighttime. I don't know why, bro. I think yeah. my sleep schedule is kind of reversed now. I'm, like, you know, awake during the nighttime. Or... Yeah, I wake during the nighttime, I sleep during the day at this point. So, I find I'm most inspired when I wake up in the morning. I get a good night's sleep. Like lately, I don't know for me, maybe it's because I switched up my lifestyle. I used to kind of be like that, like up all night. But like, I don't know, since we talked and I went to therapy and shit like that, I switched up my lifestyle. Like waking up, take the dog for a walk. Going maybe like through the woods and shit like that, you know. Nice. Kind of like keeps you busy. Bro, Get myself I, a good breakfast, some fruits and shit like that. I actually feel the exact same way because like if, if I if my sleep schedule is on point, I'm waking up at like seven eight o'clock. I love the morning time and um that, it's so that's so peaceful. It is and and you I really the birds and, I, and shit. Like, and yeah, in yeah, the yeah. fucking year in the south, so you hear the cicadas and everything. Yeah, right? yeah annoying so, ass bugs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <and> like, <laughs> But like that that's really when I get most inspired. My issue is that like I have no I don't really have anxiety issues at night at, at nighttime for some reason. But mm-hmm. like during the daytime is when I really get bad anxiety issues. And so like it's like it's like I kinda just made started making myself sleep during the day and only be awake at night so I don't have to fucking deal with that shit. And it's like it kinda fucked me up because I remember going to work early in the morning. I would always wake up and I was like, damn, I could write a fucking song right now, bro. But I couldn't because I had to go to work. Yeah. And like but now it's like I still don't wake up early in the morning anyway, so it's I didn't, I didn't really live up to that or anything, so. Yeah, I mean, if you tell you Sorry, that chair's not the most comfortable. It's okay, bro. I'm, I'm gonna have to get another. I swear, another I swear, my, my, my. I mean, I do have bad posture, but this seat is just hard to. That, that, I use that chair specifically for playing piano. You wanna switch? No, no, I'm good, I'm good bro. <laughs> like, because it keeps my back so. It keeps my posture so straight. So no, I'm, that I'm, I'm rebellious, bro. This thing wants me to keep my back straight, but I'm like, fuck no. I'm going to stop as much as I can. But, yeah. So, when did you guys meet? I'm very curious about that. Shit, this, I, I knew, I think, I, I knew about you guys separately. Like, yeah. I met you guys separately. We technically met before we actually met. Yeah, we, the first time we met was actually back when I was living at, um, back at this old apartment, um, over on the university side, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I was staying there with, uh, you know, my homie Amir or something like that, and we uh, basically, he came through for a video or something like that, and I was just playing Apex Legends or something, I didn't really yeah. pay him no mind, he was just like, hey, what's up? I was like, oh, what's up? And that was basically it. Yeah. Later on, though, I started listening to his music more and everything like that, and um, eventually I saw him at a party in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? The party that we had for Neil World, Kalari's birthday, or something like that, it was mm-hmm. lit. It was lit. Yeah, I been yeah. telling that story all the time, bro, because um, I actually went there with David Dombebe, who uh, you know, shot the asexual music video, Cause he invited me. This is whenever we had first met. We were friends, and like he's like, "Hey, so um, the Ice Out Angel show is happening in Atlanta. Ice Out Angels in the World, uh, Kalari's birthday party." And he's like, "He's like, you want to go with me?" And I was like, "Fuck it, yeah, like let's do it." And that, for for the most part, I feel like that was such a wasted opportunity 
I, for myself because I was that at the time I was still on I was still on drugs pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Well, not pretty bad, but I was still on drugs, and so like I was really antisocial. And like that's that's where like I met Sebi and like Eric Doa and like uh, David Shotty and like all of them. And like I, but like I was like I didn't talk very much to anybody. And I ended up going upstairs during the party, and I was just sitting there. And then like bro comes in and taps me on the shoulder, and he's like he's like yo you're Deep October right? And like at first I didn't realize who he was, but then he told me he's his son. And I was like, "Yo, like I know who you are. How do you know who I am?" And then I guess we just kind of chopped it up a bit. And then he handed me the blunt. We smoked a little bit, and that was it. And then left Atlanta. We didn't talk for like a solid, like probably a solid two months or so. And mm-hmm. then he ended up being at Doc's crib one day, and I came over and we met. And then ever since then we just been working and shit. We we actually didn't. It took us like three four months to finally make a song. It was uh, it took I don't, a while. It really yeah. did. Yeah. 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 We didn't make any music for at least like the first. First, like, half year that we knew each other. Yeah. Actually, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we tried this shit. It just didn't end up working until we made I Don't Mind the Weather. And after that, it just kept rolling out. And then once we moved in together... That was game over. Yeah, I swear. Like, swear. Dude, at, we, we talk about this all the time, bro. It's weird because, like, it's actually, like, overwhelming sometimes. Because every time we make a new song, like, it's way... It's harder than the one we made before. And it's like... I, I thought... I was scared. I was like... I was like, okay, we've done this four times. And every time the song has been harder than the last... This is gonna end. We're eventually we're gonna miss, but like we're like what like ten songs still deep missed, and yeah. still haven't so, missed one like, time, bro. We're just like, what the fuck, bro? It's the chemistry. It's wild, bro, because like for the longest time, like I spent a long time as Deep October, like not getting shit done the way that because I just it's it's not that like it's not I'm not like blaming the people I was surrounded by, but I wasn't really surrounded by people who had that ambitious mindset mm-hmm. and I felt like when I once I met once I met Sonny like um and I'm not trying to like ride your dick on the line or anything it's not like that yeah it's not like that but like I I fucking he kind of like showed me like that that I just the confidence that I kind of needed to like believe in myself and like since bro believed in me and he was already like ahead of me in his career with like what he's doing the money he's making all that bullshit like it inspired me to be like well I don't want to like me and bro are like really good friends now. Like I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like make myself look stupid and let bro down. So I just like, I kind of like developed the same mindset he already had of just like, just getting shit done. Like the confidence, the self esteem, all that shit. And so the chemistry works really well. And bro, the self esteem is like, you know what I'm saying? Like I've seen this man freestyle for literally like I could you know like 30 minutes straight, bro. Like 30 minutes straight, <laughs> every bar was fired, not a single miss in the line, bro. And I'll be sitting there like. And he would, he would literally walk out and be like, yeah, it wasn't that good. I'm like, what the fuck are you right. talking Dude, about? Dude, like, that's, that's, that's <laughs> another thing, bro. That's why I really appreciate him because, like, there's been so many situations where, like, we're, like, we'll be recording a song. And uh, Man Goes Blind was the most recent one that this happened on. And, like, um, I, w- I w- like, I'm recording it and I just, like, bro, like, this is garbage. And then he's like, bro, you were fucking tripping, bro. Like, get back on the mic and finish this. This shit is hard. And so, like... Because I do that, I doubt myself so hard, bro. But, like, I'm getting out of that thanks to the help of bro and all that shit. So it's just, like, yeah, it's 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 all worked out the way exactly how it's supposed to. Like, that, that's what's cool. Like, it feels like everything's happening. Like, like it was, like, written to happen to. Every day feels like a movie, I guess. You know? In a way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy when it comes way. together like that. That's yeah. usually, that's, like I said, that's the best shit when mm-hmm. it comes together that easily. Because, mm-hmm. like... There's a lot of people that would kill to be in the position both of you are in right now. You know dude, people I mean? tell us that. They're like, 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 dude, it's funny because, like, now we, now him and I, like, like we share a fan base because, like, because people associate us together. Like, yeah, like, like, people, like, like, on your, like, on my story, if, if I were to ask right now, like, what producer should I work with, I'm, at least 17 people are going to be like, Sonny, of course. And if he does the same thing, like a bunch of people are gonna be like Deep October, like literally. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's like, just it's cool how that shit works. And and I always wanted that. I used to, I, bro. I used to literally long before I knew um, Liam, Sonny, David, all the people that I, I work with close right now. I used to sit in my room back in high school and like I'd be like, bro, if I could just like meet some people who have the same the same level of talent as I and the same drive and like on the sense of like people who produce or people who make videos and shit like it would like I, I just to, yeah just anything like I, I would be set and that's like that's how life has turned out like and it bro it's actually really cool and another reason that I feel like you and I like we we click the way we do is because we come from like the same the same scene like from early SoundCloud because yeah, I it, it's wild because actually I didn't realize this till later but um when I was in high school I used to listen to this song by Saphir 
Oh, I forget yeah, what it's called. Song, fuck you. But yeah, fuck um, you by Severe. And like, I'm, you after getting Sunny Met, I ended up just randomly going back to that song one day, and I was like, bro, you produced this song. I was obsessed with this song. Like, I didn't even realize that shit. But like, but like, like I'm, I was really big on like Drip One Three Three and Grief and like t- like the, all the producers of the underground SoundCloud 2015 to like 17. And like that's something that like, like we really bond on because we both listened to that same shit. And it's really hard to find other people that were familiar with that scene of music. And so since we like we kind of clicked on that's one of the first things we clicked on because like I'd be like saying some random ass shit like oh like yeah there's this song by Bala and he's like how the fuck do you know who Bala is? Yo like, literally I was like, like bro like I used to talk to this man in like chats and shit like yeah yeah, like, yeah. Like, so it's cool it's 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 deeper than just the music shit for yeah. sure yeah for sure no relationships are definitely important well, those usually the the, uh, that's the best way to come up as a producer is to work with artists. And that's also the best way to come up with artists is to come up with a producer. It's usually, it's usually how you get the best sound. Yeah, it's way more security, bro. And it's like, pe- people enjoy seeing that. People enjoy seeing those relationships. That's mm-hmm. that's how ASAP Mob, that's how Pro Era back in the day, like, that's how members only, like, people love seeing those relationships. And like, but that's, those people are making great music because they had those relationships to back them. So, like, it's all beneficial. I like yeah. Sunny benefits me. I benefit Sunny. Like it's never like one of us taking advantage of each other. That's where the industry's like, going. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying because labels See, are also awesome. starting to have less control. That's one thing I'm learning. Labels yeah. have way less control than they used to. <laughs> yeah. And you're starting to see people just want to build with each other. Like it used to be like you know it's producing has moved. I've noticed farther away from trying to sell beats. To yeah, to place working with artists and let's make a song. I, I disagree. Really, really disagree. I disagree. I think I think now, especially with like, with like the the scene that we're in. I feel like maybe it's just because I'm on Twitter too much, but it seems like everyone, like a lot of producers, just kind of chase placements. Like I've, I've had, See, that's I've, awesome. I've, I've had producers who were like super adamant about working with me at one time, but like once they got their first big placement, like. It just, they didn't even want to that's what, yeah, that's, that's kind of what we're saying. It's moving away from selling beats and trying to actually work yeah. with artists and get placements and stuff like that. Oh, also, yeah. oh when it comes down to it, it's also more consistent. Like, you know, like Method of just yeah. like, coming out and saying, selling beats all the time. I mean, yeah, it's good to do that. You should definitely promote your beats and do everything you need to do. But um, sometimes it's just better to like find an artist, like you said, and just kind of grow and like, work. You know what I'm saying? Because your sound will develop along with all that yeah. shit. You know and you can saying? do both. Make like a whole new sound, you know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. You can do both. And I think producers should do both. Like, yeah, and I also, course, for anybody watching this, inspire art, it's aspiring artist. I'm not saying don't buy beats. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just seeing it's a trend that I'm seeing that people are starting to want to come up together more. Yeah. Like, you look at Darkie and Wendigo, it's a perfect example. People oh, have had this podcast frequently. Wendigo came up producing for Darkie. Mm-hmm. Darkie got his own sound, really, when he met Wendigo. Shout out to Key Benson, the other members of Spider-Man, but those two are known as a duo. It all works Very together, almost like a big puzzle, you know what I'm saying? It just kind of fits. That's like, a great example, Darkie and Wendigo. Sorry, yeah, Darkie and Wendigo, game. fucking Dutchman, that's how fucking Dutchman. Yeah, Dutchman does a lot, too. Dutchman works a lot of people. Dutchman is cold. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's when that's when it's cool. Shout out to Dutchman. Yeah. Um, that's something we got left. We got about fifteen minutes left. Cool. All right. Well, shit, man. Fucking um. <coughs> yeah. What do you guys have planned in the future? You guys want how you guys are working on music or? Oh yeah. You go first. Uh, oh, so for me personally, so we kind of started working on. It was kind of a joint tape again, just like Pleasure Dome was. Like mm-hmm. it was, but now like we've been making more songs, so I haven't decided how I'm gonna release Easter Pink yet, but that's what we're working on right now is something called Easter Pink, which that name just comes from the High Noon, my song High Noon, when I was like, all this stuff, then it's Pink is Easter, so I just named it Easter, I named this Easter Pink. Um, but anyways, yeah, like, after Pleasure Dome, there was a few songs that we made in that time period that were really hard, but we weren't going to put them on Pleasure Dome, and then after that, we made like four or five, and just last week, we made one of the hardest songs I think we've made in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> So like, so we have we have a whole catalog. It's just a matter of what we're gonna do with it. We're trying to make sure we do it right this time because I kind of dropped the ball on Pleasure Dome when it came to the. But it's not too late though. It's only the it's only a month old and now coming up on two months old now. But like, I wanted to have music videos before it released, and I wanted to, if I had to pay someone to put it on a bigger page, I wanted to do that because I've never done that before and I figured maybe I could go that route this time. But I never, I didn't do any of that. So like this time, minimally, I'm trying to at least get music video shot, which we have been doing. And um, 
Yeah, but this next out, this next one that we're about to put out, this next project, we're probably gonna do like a single or two first. But it, it's actually like it's on the lighter side compared to Pleasure Dome. Like mm-hmm. when it comes to like the mood of it, the ambiance of the entire thing is uh, it's a lot more. Like this, we have this one song on it. Um, what did I call it? Uh, Basically, I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's like too much speed in his beam. I'm flying. Like he he made that beat, oh, yeah. and that beat is like oh, completely different than anything we've worked on. So like it, it, it's it's gonna be really. I was actually I'm actually a little nervous about Easter Pink, or however we decide. Even if we just do that whole thing as singles, because like the songs are so it's a different it's, it's a different very different. different. But I'm bro. I'm always I'm always ahead of the curve when it comes to like what people want to hear from me because like the same thing. From the start, bro, from after I dropped the Deep October EP, after that I dropped Ultra Empathy. And I remember doing a poll on my story of like, which one did y'all, which did you guys like better, Deep October EP or Ultra Empathy? And Deep October EP won by like a long shot, and people were swiping up and telling me like, oh, I just felt like this was raw, more raw, blah, 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 this, that, and the other, whoop de whoop. And like, now I have two songs with a million views on Ultra Empathy. I remember after Ultra Empathy, um, and I dropped Qualia. Like, when I first dropped that, people were fucking with it, but I actually had a few people hit me up and be like, honestly, I was expecting more. And now, like, without any playlist placements or anything, like, we're at, like, 300K on yeah. that on that album alone. Yeah. And then, and like, even even the girl that I was fucking with for the longest time, like, she told me, like, she was a big fan, and, like, she told me, she's like, I, I kind of, when I dropped Kualia, she was like, I was like, it's, like, it's, a, it's, I like your older shit better, but now it's, like, the only thing that she would listen to was Kualia. And then same, it just keeps going. So like, I don't get as nervous about it because like, even though I know it's way different than some of the shit I put in the past, I know it's just gonna end up growing on people, just like mm-hmm. every other one of them did. Because mm-hmm. it's not bad music. It's it's music that I put an effort to. So you mean you mean lighter? I don't mean to cut you off. You mean when you said lighter? Not as depressing. Not as depressing. Yeah, not as heartbreak. Not yeah. as much heartbreak in it. A little bit more on the uh, like a stop with them. Side. Yeah, yeah, talking your shit side of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's what I got planned. In. I think Sonny's yeah, I think you gotta Oh yeah yeah. Um I'm actually working on my first um my first official album right now. It's gonna be self titled, just Sunny Vega, you know what I mean? And uh it's gonna be like half beats and half features from just like old music friends and uh, people that I fuck with and everything like that. You know, Zach's gonna be on there. Okay. Kind of homie Soul on there and Gizmo and you know what I'm saying? It's just gonna keep kinda of going on from there. Do you know if you're gonna put Exodus on there? Or are we gonna I'm just... actually kind of stuck. I was gonna talk with you about that. Okay. Actually, trying to see what uh, what song you think would be uh, a. We, we, we have we have so many songs on the back burner right we, now. We have this song called fire. called Exodus that whenever it was like we stayed in the mountains like over a year ago and um so he was on I was sober he was on acid and we were driving down the mountain <laughs> and like we were, I, I remember yeah that. yeah we were going we were because we had we had we had this nice ass Airbnb and we were driving down the mountain to go to the the river to go swim. And he's on ass and shit, and like we're just talking, you know, talk, having a good time. And he shows me this beat, and so we were playing the beat through the speaker, and we and I just wrote the song, like the hook of the song, going down the mountain, and like him being on acid, he's like, "Bro, we have to record this." <laughs> and so like, so that song I'm excited to drop because there's like a story behind it because like we were all just fucked up, and like, well I wasn't, I was actually sober, but like he was sober, I was just like in the passenger side, tripping. just tripping, just like, hey, yo, are you seeing these trees right now, bro? Like, this is so crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and so that beat, so so I'm. At, I'm actually excited for that, bro. That's that. That's gonna be cool. And plus, bro, the 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 beats that you have in your catalog right now that you've made in the last six months, in my personal opinion, just I've already told you that some of the best ones that I've I've heard out of him. And I, I try to get on them as much as I can. It really sucks whenever someone, specifically in this situation, you, whenever mm-hmm. you make a beat that as soon as I hear it, I'm like, bro. I need to get Cleo. That beat Cleo was one of them. I'm like, I need to get on this. But if I like, sometimes I just kind of struggle, and I'm like, damn, like I can't think of anything. Off, think of anything on the spot. That shit devastates me when I want to use a beat that's super hard, and then I just can't think of anything right away. So he's honestly one of the only people that's actually heard the uh, the album so far. Like I've been so protective of like all these tracks and everything like that. Like every track that I make, that's like that like it's like fire, and I'm just like, yeah, bro. Like I'm definitely gonna save this. Kind of like I've been saving my whole catalog for a few months now. Yeah. So it's, it's inevitable though, bro. Because he be like honestly, bro, like. One of the, at least that I've been around, hardest workers I've ever met is Sonny Bro. Like, oh, yeah, every every sure. single day, like, this man is making new beats every day. And so, like, it's kind of inevitable that I hear that shit, because I just be walking past this man's door, and I be stopping, and I'm like, how much shit hard, really? Yeah. <laughs> hard. Like, I, I'm going to have to get on that shit. So you but, think um, making uh, lighter, more upbeat music, you think it's better for mental health, too? You think making dark, depressing shit is kind of... Yeah, dude. Dude, yeah. My, dude, for sure. Because, like, I, I write... All my songs, especially especially from Strange Death on so far, they're all like direct 
experiences that I've gone through and I write about them. So like now every time I I can't really listen to those songs the way I used to because like it just brings me back to a time in my life that I don't want to think about. And um but when I have other songs like China Shop from Qualia. China Shop is that's, that's probably one of my favorite songs. Yeah, that's my favorite song off that thank, project. Thank you. That that's also I that think, and I, I like Best Friend too. Yeah, Best that's Friend. Probably like my two favorite songs. Yeah, thank actually, you, bro. I think I don't know if we talk about this. You should do an acoustic version of that song. But Best Friend. Yes. We did with the ukulele. Remember, yes. remember when we talked about that? Talked about that. I tried to play a little bit and it didn't turn out right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but so like, and I listen to China Shop or like other upbeat songs like Methadone or um, or Molly Melancholy, and I listen to those songs. And I'm like, like these songs are like, even though like they're upbeat, happier songs, like the lyrics are still Deep October. It's still yeah. me being in my head. You know what I'm saying? Like that type of shit. But at the same time, it's like when I listen to it, I don't feel like impending doom or dread listening to it. Anxiety. And but the, <laughs> anxiety. But 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 the thing is, that's how music affects people differently. Like a lot of people like my music because like. They listen to those sad songs when they're sad, but for whatever, I don't know why the human psyche works that way. But like for me personally, since it came from me, I sorry, right. I know I know where those songs came from. So like it's like it doesn't it kind of it's hard for me to listen to them the same way. But I'm not I'm not playing on st I, I make my it's unfortunate, but I make my best music not when I'm in a bad mindset, but when I had just gotten out of a bad mindset. I'm good at reflecting on that type of shit. That's why my a lot of my music comes out melancholy and somber is because like it's right after I just experienced some fucked up shit. Yeah. Or some not not even necessarily fucked up shit because my life is great and I'm blessed every day. But like just some shit that affected me mentally. So I'm never gonna stop making music like that. But like I do want to try and show people that like I'm not just because bro I'm so tired of being labeled as an emo artist because I don't make emo music. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Dude, bro, Spotify had me. No, no, no. Like no. the emo trap type. Um, not. Yeah, no. Spotify had me in, a, in an emo playlist, and I literally, I literally messaged TuneCore, and I was like, "Hey, I need to get taken off this playlist. Like, I don't want to be on the emo rap playlist." Not gonna lie, the whole idea of genre music kind of doesn't really sit right with me. Yeah, sometimes. music's going away from genres. Is it? Yeah, as it people should, are always bro. going to try to categorize. As something. it should. That's what I'm saying. Like generalize the categorize. We don't need all these fucking subgenres, and like, this is gonna turn into fucking heavy metal music. Back in the '90s, where you had like thrash core and industrial. Shit. What about medium? Fucking... Medium scene have like. Bro, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's another one, bro. <laughs> like it's genres. stupid. It's just noise, bro. It's just noise. People making noise, making just noise. Music, just make what you want, bro. You know, don't yeah. worry about drama and shit like that. Yeah. But um, we got like four minutes left. Oh shit. I'm also glad to hear that you're going down to, like producer artist route. I encourage a lot of producers to do that. It's a lot of you guys. I mean, if you pay attention, you know, I do that too. I put out tracks under my name. A lot, mm -hmm. um, or not a lot. I didn't do it more often. Stop being fucking lazy. <laughs> but no, no, I always, I, I encourage um, a lot of producers to do that. I think it's cool that you know producers are working to put out their own songs under their own name and brand themselves that way. I actually think that's like that and working directly with artists is like the smartest rap to do. I think there's the internet's flooded with way too many producers who are just trying to sell beats. Yeah, that's or, kind of the stereotype of producers, you know, just selling beats and all that. You know, trying to message artists like Lil Baby all day to get placements yeah, and shit like that. Yeah, I'll be real, this whole dynamic and everything is actually kind of new to me. So ever since I joined Yellow World back in, like, 2019, you know what I'm saying, like, my whole dynamic wasn't really focused based on, like, placements. It was just posting stuff on SoundCloud, trying to get out, help get yeah. heard, all that, you know. But, yeah, you know what I'm saying, like, just do what you gotta do, you know, as a producer, and, you know, there's really no right way to do this, in my opinion. There know? really is no right way, it's kind of whatever the fuck works for you. Yo, yo, that, that's my question for you, Sonny, bro, so, like, oh, shit. so, like, <laughs> like, obviously, like, there's a lot of kids that are, that are interested in producing and wanting to come up, and they've seen, like, you come up in some way, shape, or form. So, I don't want to ask, like, basically, like, I don't want to ask, like, what's your advice to them, but, like, that though, like what, like what, <laughs> like what is something that they could do differently that like other people don't do? No pressure, but you got like million and a half. So I think, I think the number one thing for producers nowadays is that um, just kind of stay true to what you feel like you want to make. You know what I'm saying? Don't try and base your stuff off of um what other people are doing, because at the end of the day, staying in your own lane is kind of an underrated statement nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you know it's the producers that have um. You know what I'm saying? A lot of originality, and you hear the sounds, are just like, how the fuck do they do that? You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, they have the longest longevity, in my opinion, you know? So, yeah, like, these new genres where, like, the beats are a big deal, like, hyperpop being one of them, somebody 
they didn't make that genre. Someone didn't make that genre by copying somebody else. Like somebody did something original and it made something completely new. So like I think that shit is so important. And don't get me wrong, it's always good to have your inspirations and stuff like that. Obviously, don't try and be a direct copy though. You know what I'm saying? Don't try and be the next Metro Boomin or whatever. Try to be the next you. You know. If you look at if you look at um, a lot of artists have been on this podcast, and I'll say this quickly because we're about to wrap this shit up. Oh, but if you look at a lot of artists been on this podcast and a lot of. Um, you know, artists that have a success in the underground music space right now, and a lot of artists that come up and have a lot of success, they all sound different. They don't sound like nobody else. Like, look at Young Thug. Literally. Look like at uh, Chief Keef. You know, look at, you know, Deep October. Look at Little <laughs> Darky. Look at Ten Cell Phones. Mm-hmm. Look at Majority of Spider Gang outside of Little Darky. You know what I mean? Sounds like Spider Gang. Look at Nas, no, no, Spider Gang. Look at NASCAR. Yeah, you want people copying you, bro. You don't want you yeah. don't want to copy people. Set the trends. You know, yeah. They set those trends. <laughs> yeah, they that, don't sound like anybody. I'm a, I'm a timeline mover, bro. I'm a, I'm a trend setter. That's why I, I saw you tweet that today, too. I was yeah. like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so. But shit, cool. fucking thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we could probably end up talking fucking all day, though. Honestly, that was only an hour. <laughs> and yeah. we've talked much more than that off camera and shit. Too. Yeah. So, it's it's probably, what, do you, what time do you guys pull up? Like six or seven? Yeah. Right. yeah like God that, damn, it's been a few hours. Four, right? yeah. Yeah. It's been a good time, though, you know. Had a good time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I like chilling with you guys. But um, it's been called Classic Indie Number 53. We're deep now. Yeah. 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 Follow us on Instagram. Follow them on Instagram. At Sunny uh, Vega, at Sunny Vega 24K, whatever. All yes, that. sir. You know, at Father Funeral, which will, I'm gonna have Deep October one day. One day, that's his goal. At to get a person who hasn't posted in years. <laughs> so, so fucking. <laughs> and you know, follow me at triple B O Y B W E on the beat and hit the website at K U L T Classicfisher.com. Follow us at K U L T Classicfisher on all platforms. We're on TikTok now. And. Make sure to follow our Clips channel, Clips by Cult Classic, K-L-I-P-S by Cult Classic. Follow that on YouTube. It's clips and highlights from our interviews. I don't even know why I'm looking at the camera. That shit died. Um, oh, did it really? Or it didn't die. It went out. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Peace.